Monroe. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be back in the great city of Atlanta in this area and to also to be with the most excited people in the world. The best people in the world are single people. And that is why I am still single. And standing next to me is the most single woman I have ever met. And that's why I married her. Let's hold hands together, please. Tell your neighbor it's good to touch an original. Tell your neighbor if you knew who I really was, you would take me for lunch today. Absolutely true. The word of God says, wherever any two shall touch and agree concerning anything on the earth, it shall be done for them of our Father who is in heaven. Let's touch and agree right now. Father, thank you for filling this place with revelation knowledge. Thank you for wisdom from above to guide us and to apply to our daily living. Thank you for your promise that when we come together in your name, you are already in the midst of us to bless us. So I ask you now, Lord, to invade our ignorance with your revelation, destroy our ignorance with your truth, and reveal to us the clarity of your principles that we may live not only effectively, but we may live with a destiny. We thank you now for bringing us together to change us permanently. Speak to our hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We expect it, we receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, watch me change right before your eyes. You may be seated. God bless you. I'd like for you to give a warm welcome to the woman who I've been married to for the past 25 years. It's been wonderful. This is my lovely, darling, wonderful, fantastic, beautiful, awesome wife, Ruth, the mother of the only two children I have on the planet, uh, the woman that took my virginity away. And this year we are celebrating our Silver Jubilee year of marriage. It's a joy to marry the right person. It's a misery to marry the wrong person. She has been an asset, a blessing. Every day of my life with her has been a positive influence in my life. It's been a joy and a pleasure being married to her. I couldn't think of anyone better to live with than this woman. I tell you, I love you with all my heart, baby. My liver, my lungs, my pancreas and everything within me, baby. Please welcome Ruth Monroe. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's really a joy to be here with you. How many of you are whole today? How many of you are enjoying the state you are in now? Amen. Because you know the same misery that you are feeling now in this state you're going to take over in the state that you want to get in so let's enjoy the state that we are in now it's a process it's a preparation for where we want to go so if you are a whole person now you're going to be a whole person for where you want to go amen and for you singles I want you to know that God is preparing you for whom he has prepared for you. So if you are looking for a mate, you want to be an asset. Because God will not bring a deficit to you. He's going to bring someone to add to your life to take you higher, not lower. So we are not going to settle for anything less. 
we are always going to settle for the best. Amen? So I encourage you to be strong. You are not alone. God says he will never leave you nor forsake you, no matter what state you are in. And he is preparing you. He is taking you through the process. And you are going to come out better, stronger, and even more mature for where he is taking you. Amen. And be encouraged. God only bring assets into our life. I, can, I know. I am an asset to him. He is better for marrying me. That's the way you have to feel. Anybody comes into your life, it's good for them. Amen? Amen. Oh boy, now you see why I married her, huh? It's a joy to be here this morning. I know you had a great breakout sessions today. And uh, my job is to take you through to lunch. In other words, from here until lunch. So I hope you get yourself ready to go into some revelation. Uh, you can't hear me? Don't blame me. Only my wife turns me on. So they better turn me on. Amen. Is that better now? Just a little bit more? All right, get your Bibles, please, and a clean sheet of paper. I want to do two things today, and we're going to take a break to come up for air. I want to speak on this subject, single but not alone. My subtitle today is The Advantage of Being Single. The Advantage of Being Single. And I believe that it's important to begin today with the worst scenario. And the worst scenario is a broken relationship. I don't think there's anything worse than a divorce. Some of you are here today because you are divorced. You become what you call single again. I don't call it that. I call it unmarried. Those of you who are here today who have never been married, maybe you came from a family that has been divorced. Your mother and father got a divorce and you know how tragic and traumatizing that is. It's very difficult to survive a, a divorce. There's nothing worse than going through a relationship that falls apart that we call a broken heart. Some of you have never been married, but you've gone through the experience of a divorce. And what that means is you had given yourself to someone at a certain level of emotional attachment and then something went wrong in that relationship. Maybe you were engaged to be married or maybe you went with a man or a woman for a few years and then it didn't work and you went through a very difficult tearing of that relationship and so you did have some kind of experience of what a divorce feels like. There's no human experience more tragic than a divorce. Divorce is defined as the death of a relationship write that down a divorce is the death of a relationship again that may not be necessarily between two married people it may even be between two people who have been very close for a few years and then something went wrong and your heart goes through that trauma that relationship died divorce is worse than physical death the answer to most people's question, why is divorce so tough? The answer is because divorce is worse than physical death. Some of you are nodding your head because you've been through that. You, you've been married for a few years and then something went wrong with the relationship. And the reason why it's worse than physical death, and I want the people who have never been married to understand this so that you can slow down. Because you think that marriage is a solution. 
It's not a solution. Why is divorce worse than physical death? Because divorce is a death without a burial. It is better for a person to die than for them to get a divorce and still be alive. Why? Because when someone dies physically, you can bring what they call closure to it. You can cry, go to a wake, you can have a funeral, you can weep over the grave, you can put the body in the ground, you can cover it up with dirt, you can put a marker on it, you can put a wreath on it, you can leave the cemetery and never go back. It's over and you never see them again. So you can bring closure to it. But when you get a divorce, the death of relationship, it's burial free. There's no burial involved. Because when you get a divorce, you can't put the person in a hole. I know you wish you could, but you can't. You can't put dirt on top of them. I know you think about it often. You can't put them in a cemetery and leave them forever. The problem is they keep resurrecting in the food store when you turn a corner. When you go to school to pick up the kids, there's the resurrection again. When it's time to pay alimony or not pay it or meet at the courtroom to get it. When you go to see the kids or to bring the kids or to exchange the kids, there's this resurrection and the pain keeps opening up. It's the worst kind of death. The death of relationships. And that's why you do not want to get a divorce. The Bible has no arrangements for divorce. God made no arrangements for divorce. None at all. So nobody wants to experience a divorce. Nobody. Now, if any of you who have never been married would like to know how horrible divorce is, I want you to find someone in this seminar who have been through a divorce and let them talk to you. I guarantee you they will talk you out of marriage. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Let me see those hands. Yes, honest. See the divorce people. It's a horrible experience. And by the way, there's no way to solve it. You are permanently damaged. Why? Because divorce is not the parting of two people. It's the ripping of two souls. Parts of you are gone forever in the other person. And that is why the Bible has no solution for divorce except the miraculous healing of the Holy Spirit. It says in the book of Luke, chapter 4 it says when the Spirit of God comes through the Messiah it says he will open the prison to the prisoners he will give sight to the blind and then it says he will heal the broken hearted in other words the only solution to the pain of divorce is an actual healing by Jesus a psychologist cannot help you with a divorce and the pain of it. That's why most psychologists are divorced themselves. So this conference is to prepare you and to help you not make mistakes. Not deal with the danger of having to go into a relationship. Now let me just say this carefully. Divorce is impossible without marriage. Write that down please. I know it sounds simple but you keep missing that. You cannot get a divorce unless you're married. Secondly, marriage is impossible without individuals. So you need marriage to, marriage to get a divorce, but you need individuals to get married. So the prerequisite for divorce is marriage. And the prerequisite for marriage is individuals. And thirdly, marriage, because it's the prerequisite for divorce, is more important than divorce. 
Now, if marriage is necessary for a divorce, and individuals are necessary for marriage, then the most important thing in relationship is not divorce, nor marriage. It's individuals. Let me put it this way. Singleness is the prerequisite for marriage. Now, I'm going to give you some definition and understanding of this concept because one of the biggest difficulties we have today is that people keep thinking that singleness is a problem. Singleness is not a problem. Let me talk about the key to marriage a little bit. First of all, your marriage is only as good as your singleness. So stop concentrating on getting married. Your relationships are as good as you are. No less and no more. You bring to the marriage what you are. When you walk down the aisle in your white dress and your tuxedo, whatever is wrapped up in those clothing is what the other person gets. Nothing happens at the altar. If you are lazy before you arrived, they are taking a lazy person home. If you are stingy before you arrived, they are taking a stingy man home. If you are stupid before you arrived, you got a well-dressed stupid person. No more, no less. If their feet smell before they came to church, you take stinking feet home with you. <laughs> Very important. No miracles happen at the altar. Just faith in words. Singleness is a myth. It's a myth to me. It's not real. And I want to destroy the myth of singleness today. I want to give you a good point to write down, and that is, it's okay to be single. But it's not okay to be alone. Matter of fact, God wants you to be single. What he doesn't want is for you to be alone. The first defect that God found in his creation was this defect that he called alone. God normally in his creative process makes everything perfect. But the first thing God found wrong or defective with his product was the fact that he called this is alone and this is not good for me. It is not good for the product to be alone. Let me just clarify a point here, and that is, it's not a singleness problem that we have. It's the problem of being single. There's a difference. We think we have a singleness problem. No, we don't. Our problem is being single. You should never get married until you are single. I'm going to pause for you to get that point. I'm going to say it very slowly. You should never get married until you are single. Most people get married because they are alone. <laughs> people get married because they feel lonely. They don't get married because they were single. And that's why you should never marry a person until they're single. We keep confusing singleness with being alone. And there's a difference. Relationships get better the more single you become. My marriage 
has been a rich, wonderful experience for 25 years because my wife and I continue to be single. And every day we improve in our singleness. Singleness is more important than marriage. And most of you in this room have never been single. All you've been is unmarried. And thank God. <laughs> I was thinking when I was flying from Los Angeles here last night about the fact that most of you I'm going to meet today need to ask yourself a question. And the question is, if you knew you the way you know you, would you marry you? <laughs> Think about it. Think about your bad breath in the morning. Would you like to wake up next to that bad breath? What about your secret habits not bathing when you should? Stinking socks, smelly underwear. I mean, would you sleep with that? Don't get funny on me now. You might as well accept this. And you asking people to take that home with them. For the rest of their lives. <laughs> Singleness is a state to be pursued, not avoided. And that's why it's important to have this session. Because we keep misunderstanding the concept of singleness. It's a myth. We think singleness is a negative. Singleness is the most positive thing in the world and it is the key to relationships. As a matter of fact, to be single should be the goal of every married person. How's that for a confusing statement? The more single you are, the more successful your relationships will become. Not just marriage, I'm talking about friendships. Some of you got horrible friendships and they keep falling apart and there's tension all the time and you cannot get along with your friends because you are not yet single. Could you imagine getting married like that? You can't even keep friendships. Because you're having difficulty with your own singleness. Let's talk about this very quickly. Singleness is actually God's idea. It's God's original foundational plan for you. And let me show you some perspective. Matthew 19 was read earlier. Let me just read it for you. Please turn there. I want you to underline this chapter for me very quickly. Matthew chapter 19 is an important chapter. It starts out with a question in verse 3, asked by the religious leaders to Jesus Christ our Lord. And they said to him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any and every reason? Again, he's talking about, they're talking about divorce. He answered, haven't you read that at the beginning it was not so because the Creator made them male and female? Stop reading right there. That's a powerful statement. They're talking about divorce. He ignored them. They're talking about a broken heart. He ignored them. He says, look, you guys talking about something I don't know about. <laughs> you talking about divorce and broken homes and broken families and wayward children. You talking about hurt emotions and traumatizing your children. You talk about people fighting and beating up each other and domestic problems. He said, look, in the beginning it was not so. He took them behind Genesis chapter 3, back to chapter 1. And he said, in the beginning, God, watch my lips, did not create marriage. Watch my lips again. In the beginning, God did not create marriage. That's what he really was saying. They said, should a man divorce his wife and in every reason? He said, no, no, no. It doesn't begin with marriage. He says, in the beginning, God made them male. <laughs> he didn't make marriage. He made male first and then he made a female. And they got married. You are beginning with the wrong thing. You're beginning with the product of marriage. 
I'm beginning with the ingredients for marriage. Oh, I'm getting ready to talk to myself. He said, look, you guys are focusing on marriage and divorce, and God's focusing on male and female. If you want never to experience a divorce, he says, you must begin with the male and the female in the beginning. Very important. He said, look, God doesn't know what you're talking about, and I'm God. I don't know what you're talking about. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is from the beginning, we made male, we made female. You guys made divorce. I never made divorce. Don't know what you're talking about. That's an invention of Moses. All I made was male and female in the beginning. Hey, boys, in the beginning. That's important because you don't want to marry anybody who is not in the beginning. See, there are two males and there are two females. Let me tell you who they are. There's a female in the beginning and there's female after chapter 3. There's a male in the beginning and there's a beginning, there's a male after chapter 3. And if you marry an after chapter 3 male, you married a hazard. Let's prove it. He says, For this reason should a man leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall no longer be two but one. For what reason? He gave us the reason. The reason is they must be male and female in the beginning. That means the only time you should leave your mother and your father is when you found someone who is in the beginning. Oh boy. So your first question when a man looks at you and says he wants to marry you should not be do you love me, but where are you located? Are you before Genesis 3 or after Genesis 3? Are you back in the garden or are you in the bush? We need to know. Oh, I need two days to talk about this. When she winks at you, brother, and say, you, you're cute, just say, baby, where are you located? Are you before Genesis 3 or after Genesis 3? That becomes your determination for a long-term relationship. Why? Because that's the reason to leave home. We keep leaving the security of our homes to enter tents. Shacks, shacking up. Stay neighbor, stay home. At least you know where it is. Clap your hands right there, that's right. You know where home is. Now watch this, verse six. So they are no longer two, he says, but one, therefore, what God joins together, let no ex old boyfriend, old girlfriend, or lawyer put asunder. Whom God joins together, he says, let no lawyer no judge, no ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, or spouse, or even prophet, put asunder. The emphasis here is whom God joins together. God does not marry everybody. 
The only people that God actually marries are the ones Jesus says qualifies in the beginning. <laughs> so every marriage that is not in the beginning qualification is married by the state. Let me put it another way. Coming to a church building and standing here does not guarantee that God join you together. Most of the marriages that I have seen in churches should not have been done in churches. They should have gone to the downtown registrar office and let some legal person just kind of speak over them. Why? Because if they join you together, when you're ready, they can put you asunder. Let me prove how that's so crazy. You come before God, you say, to get married, but then you go before the lawyer and the judge to get divorced. That's confusing to me. If you come before God to be put together, then when you're ready to be put apart, invite everybody back. Come on, let's talk about this. Get the bridesmaid, get the groomsmen, get the music, get all the flowers, and make sure God is present, and say, now we want to be put asunder. I dare you. How dare you? Come before God to be married and go before the judge to be divorced. You hypocrite, you. <laughs> I have a suggestion. Whenever you are about to print your wedding invitations, put on the bottom. And if we plan to get a divorce, keep this invitation. That's how ridiculous it is to walk down these aisles in a white dress and a blue and a dark suit and tell God I do before him and go before a judge and says I don't. Verse 9. Anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness and marries another woman commits adultery. She said, look, I didn't create divorce. I don't agree with it. He says, but at least I'll give you a standard. The standard is you shouldn't even think about divorce unless the other party has violated the marriage bed. In other words, the only qualification God allowed for you to do what you invented was sexual corruption. Now why does he use the word adultery? I'm going to give you a quick lesson. According to Jesus, there's no other grounds for divorce. You can't say, well, I, uh, I don't love him anymore. I don't love her anymore. It doesn't qualify for divorce. Or, we, we outgrew each other. Still ain't qualified. Or, I got saved. Still ain't qualified. <laughs> the only way out of what you can't wait to get in Is adultery that means that right now in heaven God have a lot of people already and still married who are already divorced on earth they're still married in heaven God said no they ain't qualified so they're married that's why they keep committing adultery over and over again with other people because as far as heaven is concerned you are still married another challenge if you get married listen carefully this is scriptural standard now not religious standard because religion you know they make their own standard 
Christianity is a religion. It makes its own standard. I'm talking about the Bible now, the kingdom. <laughs> the kingdom says, if you marry a person and you decide to separate, you cannot marry anybody else, no matter how long, as long as that other person does not commit adultery. <laughs> So a lawyer and a judge cannot destroy a marriage in God's kingdom. The only one that can destroy a marriage in God's kingdom is an adulterer. Hmm. So if you decide you can't live with somebody anymore, not on the grounds of, the, of adultery, and you live apart, God's watching because in heaven you're still married and I don't care how many women who wink at you or how many men wink at you and say they love you you can't get involved why in heaven you're still married as long as that other person does not commit adultery you are married before God this is kingdom standard now when they commit adultery and you know and prove it you are free to marry again that's the grounds of kingdom. Do you know why? Because whenever you get married and you consummate that marriage with sex, blood is spilled. That's why two men cannot consummate a marriage. And that is why two women cannot consummate a marriage why there's no blood covenant possible see marriage is not about rings you know in san francisco they, in san francisco they keep putting rings it ain't about rings it's about blood oh you don't understand it's about blood. That's why the Bible talks so much about the blood. Because the blood is the foundation of both life and death. Life and death is in the blood. That's why every female comes to earth locked up. Completely locked up. Comes packaged. Locked up. Every female. Every female comes to this planet locked up. And the, the designer did a good job. He locked her up with a little film of skin called the peanut. And that peanut the skin is filled with blood. It's actually an organ, the doctors say. And all the organ supplies is blood. It locks her up. And the only way to open up a female is to spill blood on yourself and her. It's a blood covenant. So when a woman is opened by a man for the first time, there's a covenant cut. No matter what you say, God marks in heaven a little note. Covenant. Follow me now. That's why sex is only relegated to marriage. Because you don't want to cut a covenant with anybody who ain't going to be with you forever. So my wife and I cut a covenant on our wedding night. Blood on both of us. Matter of fact, if you read the scriptures carefully, you'll understand how deep this thing is to God. God told Moses that when a man and woman got married, when they went into the wedding bed the first night, the priest had to stand outside the door waiting for the sheet. We need to... Woo and standing next to the priest, read the Old Testament, was the whole community and their parents with stones in their hands. And if the sheet came out and there was nothing on it, somebody died. 
We need to bring that back. Clap loud. Don't get nervous. I know some of y'all ain't got no sheet at all right now, but I'm going to help you. But that's how serious God takes the covenant. I'm talking to singles. Watch this. So, when the blood covenant is cut between me and my wife, in that marriage bed undefiled that means there's no problem in the bed then if I was to have sex with another woman I cut another covenant now you know the principle of covenant is the only way to break a covenant is to cut a new one that's why you got the old testament covenant and the new testament covenant and what broke the covenant it was blood on the cross oh you don't get it so the blood of bulls and goats and sheep and turtle doves in the old testament was a covenant that lasted for one year but here comes jesus the lamb of god he's gonna cut another covenant this one is forever Woo! That's why the Bible says, when the new covenant was cut, the old was done away with, and he has a better covenant. But it was what? Blood. So when a man or woman commits adultery, they cut another covenant, which means that the old one is dead. That is why the person is free to marry again. <laughs> in my book I listed it's a long title I know you probably got a copy of it it's called single married separated and then life after divorce please read the whole book you see first you're single then you get married but what about separation there's some folks in here who ain't divorced yet? They just separated for years and they think they're free. You're still not free if you just separated. In heaven, God still got you tied as married. Unless that other person committed adultery. That means once you get married in the kingdom. Now let me just say this. This is a hopefully Christian conference am I right are you sure so there are no homosexuals in here there are no lesbians in here But there are believers in the word of God in here. Which means that you are not a normal single. That means I am judging you according to not Oprah Winfrey show, but according to this book. Am I right? Yes. Say amen loud. Yes. All right, so I can talk to you from this book. Yes. This book dictates how you live your single life. Not ebony. My job today is to frighten you so you don't get married.
because some of you got this weird idea that all your problems would be solved if you could just get married and this book teaches the complete opposite in first Corinthians chapter 7 it says if you are not married it is good to stay that way for if you do get married chapter 7 you shall have many troubles Say, neighbor, I can't wait to get in trouble. <laughs> Some of you came to this conference, you ain't looking for God, you're looking for trouble. But I'm going to meet me a fine lady there, brother. Mm -hmm. I'm going to meet a fine brother there. No, you're going to meet a lot of trouble according to the word of God. You think you got problems as an unmarried person. Just get married. And the only way out as a believer is adultery. Not domestic violence, not emotional stress, not abandonment or kicking or slapping or cussing at you. You're still not out, God says. You're still in. The only way out is for your spouse to break the covenant of blood. The disciples heard this. So here's what they said in verse 10. The disciples said to him, now they're listening to him talk. They said, okay, then if this is the situation <laughs> between the husband and the wife, then it is better not to marry give them a hand they're smart guys come on everybody clap the disciples says look see they understood him they said my goodness if you get in there's only one way out see Peter I believe is the one who said that because he was married already he was catching hell from sister Peter and Jesus just locked the door on him you can't get out unless sister Peter sleep with another man. Peter went, my God, I shouldn't have got married. The point is the disciples understood the standard of marriage. And it was so high, they said it's safer not to get in it. And most of you can't wait to get in it. We keep making the same mistakes. Let's talk about the principle of singleness then. Why is it so important, therefore, to be single to Jesus? He said, male and female is more important than marriage. Singleness is the most important state of human development. Number two, singleness is the foundation of God's design for human family. I didn't say marriage, I said singleness is. It's the foundation of God's plan for the human family. It is singleness, not marriage. Very important. Number three, God began the human family with a, a one single human being, not a couple. I've heard people say, well, the foundation of society is the family. That's not true. That's not what God started with. Some say the foundation of the society is marriage. Still not true. That's not what God started with. Today, there are 6.7 billion people on earth. 6.7 billion. And God only made one from the soil. He never went back. God built the entire 6 billion people on one human being on the bottom you know and I know hopefully that when you're gonna build something the most important thing is the foundation every building is only as valuable as its foundation 
and God did not build the building of the human family on a couple he built it on one all of God's instructions were not given to a couple they were only given to one you all hear me today please God created one human being put that one human being in the garden told that one human being verse 15 chapter 2 to work cultivate protect God and keep his word one person he told that one person to have responsibility for the planet and when that one person got all the information the instructions and the directives then God said in verse 18 it is not good for this one person to be alone I'm going to say this again all the instructions all the directives were given to one person that means when you meet a person hear me please and they are interested in you or you in them stop talking about love don't talk about love that's the problem find out did you get the instructions yet Oh, hallelujah. Write the word Eden down. Let me show you the first instruction is the one you keep missing. Everybody say Eden. Eden. There's a book out there. Hopefully they got it. I wrote this book after 20 years of research. The book is called The Purpose for Praise and Worship. And it's not about praise and worship. It's about Eden. The word Eden means presence or moment or spot. It's a strange word. It means presence, moment, or spot. In other words, the word Eden is not a place. That's why you can't find Eden today. No one can find Eden. They never found Eden. No archaeologists have found Eden. They can find everything, but they can't find Eden. What? Eden was not a place. It was an environment, an atmosphere. <laughs> it was the presence of God. Oh, I want to talk about this. And the first place God put this one human being, the first place, was not in the presence of a woman. The first place he put this person is in Eden, the presence of God, which means the first place you should meet a person is not at a singles club, a church party, Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. the first place you need to ask them if they love it's not your presence and that's just the first instruction if you meet a man who is ashamed to lift his hands forget it I mean it today don't even give him a second thought. <sighs> God, I need to be a little longer. See, if a man doesn't love the presence of God, you shouldn't like his presence. Brother, if you got to leave church building to go and find a woman in a club that's the wrong woman brother if a woman doesn't love to worship she gonna make a bad wife if a man doesn't like God's presence you got a malfunctioning male and that's just number one now I've seen most women make this mistake, men do it too, but women most of the time, they would leave the church to go and find a hoodlum, marry him, and then try to drag him to Eden. 
You are going to Eden. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Doesn't work. And some of you are divorced right now because you violated the first requirement. You thought he would love God after you got married. Listen to me. Please buy this CD. I'm going to say it once. If he didn't change to get you, he won't change to keep you. God did not begin the human family with a couple. Stop making that mistake. He began it with what? One. Korabahashi <laughs> prasata. Write this down. God forever established the foundation stone for all relationships. And that is the single individual. It is more important to be single than to be married. I believe we need more single conferences than married conferences. If we got the single conferences worked out right, we'll need less marriage conferences. Very important. And by the way, let me just say this. Don't believe what anyone tells you when they love you. Because everything is a fake. That scent you smell, that ain't real. All that perfume and cologne they got all over them, mm-mm. They're here always fixed, mm-mm, brother. You should see her in the morning. <laughs> you created single isn't that beautiful God made you by yourself this is very important Genesis 127 says so God created man male and female created he them he made them male and female the next verse says, and God blessed them. God blessed who? Them. Who is them? Them male and female. Very important. <laughs> who did God bless? Male and female. Who did God bless? Male and female. Who did God bless? Male and... So who got the blessing? The male and the female. Now the opposite of blessing is cursing. So if God bless male and female, then if you bring to him a male and a male, or a female and a female, Lose, use your logic. <laughs> if he bless male and female, then obviously if you bring male and male, they're going to get the opposite of a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why every female comes to earth locked up completely locked up comes packaged locked up every female every female comes to the planet locked up and the, de the designer did a good job he locked her up with a little film of skin called the peanut and that peanut of skin is filled with blood it's actually an organ the doctors say 
and all the organ supplies is blood, it locks her up. And the only way to open up a female is to spill blood on yourself and her. It's a blood covenant. So when a woman is opened by a man for the first time, there's a covenant cut. No matter what you say, God marks in heaven a little note. Covenant. Follow me now. That's why sex is only relegated to marriage. Because you don't want to cut a covenant with anybody who ain't going to be with you forever. So my wife and I cut a covenant on our wedding night. Blood on both of us. As a matter of fact, if you read the scriptures carefully, you'll understand how deep this thing is to God. God told Moses that when a man and woman got married, when they went into the wedding bed the first night, the priest had to stand outside the door waiting for the sheep. We need to bring that back. Woo and standing next to the priest, read the Old Testament, was the whole community and their parents with stones in their hands. And if the sheet came out and there was nothing on it, somebody died. We need to bring that back. Clap loud. Don't get nervous. I know some of y'all ain't got no sheet at all right now, but I'm going to help you. serious God takes the covenant I'm talking to singles watch this so when the blood covenant is cut between me and my wife in that marriage bed undefiled that means there's no problem in the bed then if I was to have sex with another woman, I cut another covenant. Now you know, the principle of covenant is, the only way to break a covenant is to cut a new one. That's why you got the Old Testament covenant and the New Testament covenant. And what broke the covenant? It was blood on the cross. Oh, you don't get it. So the blood of bulls and goats and sheep and turtle doves in the Old Testament was a covenant that lasted for one year. But here comes Jesus, the Lamb of God. He's going to cut another covenant. This one is forever. Woo! That's why the Bible says when the new covenant was cut, the old was done away with. And he has a better covenant. But it was what? Blood. So when a man or woman commits adultery, they cut another covenant, which means that the old one is dead. That is why the person is free to marry again. <laughs> In my book, I listed, it. it's a long title, I know you probably got a copy of it. It's called Single Married Separated and then life after divorce. Please read the whole book. You see, first you're single, then you get married, but what about separation? There's some folks in here who ain't divorced yet. They just separated for years and they think they're free. You're still not free if you just separated. In heaven, God still got you tied as married. Unless that other person committed adultery. That means once you get married in the kingdom. Now let me just say this. This is a hopefully Christian 
conference. Am I right? Are you sure? So there are no homosexuals in here. There are no lesbians in here. But there are believers in the word of God in here. Which means that you are not a normal single. That means I am judging you according to not Oprah Winfrey show, but according to this book. Am I right? Say amen loud. All right, so I can talk to you from this book. This book dictates how you live your single life. Not Ebony. My job today is to frighten you so you don't get married. Because some of you got this weird idea that all your problems would be solved if you could just get married. And this book teaches the complete opposite. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 it says, If you are not married, it is good to stay that way. For if you do get married, chapter 7, you shall have many troubles. Say, neighbor, I can't wait to get in trouble. If you meet a man, who is ashamed to lift his hands. Forget it. I mean it today. Don't even give him a second thought. God, I need to be a little longer. See, if a man doesn't love the presence of God, you shouldn't like his presence. Brother, if you got to leave church building to go and find a woman in a club, that's the wrong woman, brother. If a woman doesn't love to worship, she's going to make a bad wife. If a man doesn't like God's presence, you got a malfunctioning male. And that's just number one. Now I've seen most women make this mistake. Men do it too, but women most of the time. They would leave the church to go and find a hoodlum. Marry him and then try to drag him to Eden. You are going to Eden. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Doesn't work. God did not begin the human family with a couple. Stop making that mistake. He began it with what? One. <laughs> you know, faith does come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith means belief. You believe what you keep hearing. And you can only have faith for what you know. So therefore, the more you know, the more your belief system can tap into what is right and good. And God's word is the source of truth, which can become your source of belief and faith. 
Today's teaching is one of those ways that you can find and discover God's will for your life. Now, if you would like a copy of today's teaching, we have it also on CD, and you can get the entire series on CD, or on cassette tape. You can also order it on video, and of course, we got DVD on the way too, so if you'd like to know of ways you can get this teaching in its fullness, please go ahead and write to me right now, or you can go ahead and tap into our website, and you can put an order in right there. Uh, we also have our brand new book entitled The Power of Vision. And with that book, we got a new surprise, and that is people have been asking, how can I work this book into my life and reinforce the principles? Well, we also have now the workbook. They both go together. And the workbook and the, and the textbook are ways of reinforcing the program on how you can become more knowledgeable of your vision in life. May you continue to find God's will for your life and discover it, and may you walk in His ways and discover His perfect plan for your future. Until next week, Dr. Monroe saying thanks for joining us, and of course, stay tuned for good programming right here on the BFM Global Television Network. We're out of time, but you can have this message in its entirety. Write to Bahamas Faith Ministries International or call the number on your screen and give the order number. Or log on to our website, www.bfmmm.com.